Hi, for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about subtracting functions. Um, if it says f minus g of x, this really just means take the equation f of x and subtract the equation g of x from it. Okay, um, for these, the domain, remember the domain is the values that we can plug in for x. Um, so the domain of the difference, which is the answer to the subtraction problem, is the domain of your original f of x function and the domain of your g of x. It's the intersection. So if you see this symbol right here, um, that's also used for and. So anytime you see this symbol in math, that means and. So with this, I'm going to do two different sums. For the first one, we're going to find f minus g of x. So this is just telling us to take our f of x equation 3x plus 5, and we're going to subtract from it our g of x equation. So we're going to subtract x minus 4. With subtraction, you do have to be careful about watching your signs because this negative applies to everything behind it. So you do have to make sure that you distribute that in. So the first one would still be 3x plus 5. It does not change. But this would become minus x and plus 4 because we're doing a negative 1 times x and a negative 1 times negative 4. So to find the full difference, f minus g of x, we would just combine like terms. So I could do 3x minus x, which is 2x, and 5 plus 4, which is 9. So this would be the final answer. This would be the difference between those two values. Um, the next thing that we want to look at is the domain. Remember that the domain of the answer has to fit in the domain of f and the domain of g. So if I look at these two values, for this first one right here, the domain for f of x equals 3x plus 5 is negative infinity to po positive infinity because there are no restrictions. Um, as far as the domain goes, you always start with negative infinity to positive infinity. If you have any radicals, um, the value under the radical called the radicand has to be greater than or equal to zero. If you have any denominators, the denominator cannot equal zero. So the domain for both of these is the same thing because both of them are just linear expressions and I can pick any value for x. There are no restrictions on what I can pick for x. So the domain for this one, depending upon how you are writing this, um, it can be written as all real numbers. It can also be written as R with an extra line in it. This is the symbol for real numbers. Or if you are working in interval notation, you can say that it's from negative infinity to positive infinity. There's a lot of different ways of writing the domain, and it really just kind of depends on the course that you are in. For the next one, we're still doing the same thing. We're going to find f minus g of x. So again, that just means take your f of x equation and subtract your g of x equation. So we would plug this in. f of x is 3 radical x minus 4. So that's what we're going to replace this with. And then we're going to subtract from it our g of x equation. So we would have 5 minus the square root of x minus 1. Okay. Again, pay very, very close attention to your signs. Remember that we do have to distribute this in. So we would have 3 radical x minus 4 minus 5 plus the square root of x minus 1. We don't distribute it inside of the radical, just to the outside. So a negative times a negative does give us a positive. We would then go through and combine any like terms that we can for our final answer. So we would say that f minus g of x is equal to, I don't have any other like terms, so I would just leave it as 3 radical x. If you wanted to, you could write your next radical term. So we could put the x minus 1. Make sure that you end it after the 1 and that you are very clear about where your radical ends. And then the only thing that we can combine is the negative 4 and negative 5, which would give us negative 9. So this would be our final answer. Remember, the domain for this is all values in the domain of f and all values in the domain of g. So for this one, our domain is 
the radicand, this part right here, because we're only looking for real numbers, okay? Um, the square root of a negative, remember, gives us an imaginary, and we're just looking for real solutions. So to take this, it has to be greater than or equal to zero. So for this, x would have to be greater than or equal to zero. The domain for this one is x has to be greater than or equal to 1, because if I plug in 1, 1 minus 1 would give me 0. So our domain of our difference is the intersection of those two. So I don't have to write x is greater than 0 and x is greater than or equal to 1, because what happens here is we already have this part, the domain x is greater than or equal to 1, and anything that is greater than or equal to 1 is also going to be greater than or equal to 0. So we would just write this part right here. So in set notation, we would say x such that x is greater than or equal to 1 because all values that are greater than or equal to 1 are also greater than or equal to 0. If you wanted to, again, this is set notation, so if it asks for set notation, this is the notation that you would use. If it asks for interval notation, you would say from 1 to positive infinity. So this would be the interval notation. Okay. Um, so with this, just to recap, if it asks you to find f minus g of x, it's just saying subtract the two equations, combine any like terms, and put the two equations together. The domain is always the domain, the intersection of the domain of f and g. And you don't have to have, it could say h minus f, and the, one of the equations could be labeled as h instead of f or g. We could do g minus f. You always do the same thing. It's just a matter of you just take whatever's first and subtract whatever's second. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or other topics you need me to cover, please let me know.